Hello everyone, welcome in this video tutorial on modeling of an occupancy disorder in addition to spatial position disorder in the same crystal structure. I hope this video tutorial finds you all in a very good health in this COVID times. The crystallographic programs used are Polex2 and Selexel. These programs are available free of charge for the academic users. The necessary files required for the refinement are used with permission from Dr. Peter Muller and from Mr. Song Adlan. The more detail about this particular example is available in this book reference Crystal Structure Refinement, a Crystallographer's Guide to Selection, edited by Professor Peter Muller. So before going to the refinement parts, let's have a look at the structure of the present molecule. The present molecule is a class of an aluminium immunosilicates. This one, the stepwise halogenation with elementary iodine leads to two different halogenated case, a twofold and a fourfold halogenated case, whereby for each iodine atom added, one methyl group is eliminated. Both iodinated species crystallizes together as a mixed crystal in the monoclinic space group P21 by N with half a molecule per S metric unit. The other half is generated from the first one by the crystallographic inversion center. The model of this mixed crystal can be refined as disorder assuming the presence of either a methyl group or iodine at the same position. So let's begin with the refinement part. Okay, so I am using the program OLEX2 and I placed the uh, required file in the folder named occupancy disorder. This is reflection file, dot scale file. The first three column are reflection H, K, L, N, H, K, L. Fourth column is intensity and the fifth column is standard deviation in the corresponding intensity. So this is I and this is sigma I. And the first three column are reflection Miller indices H, K, L. Uh, this is instruction file, dot INS file. First is title, name ALSI aluminium silicon 1 in the space group P21 by N. Second is cell. The first entry is about the uh, radiation used here molybdenum K alpha, then A, B, C, alpha, beta, and gamma. Then third is Z, E, R, R. First entry is 2, means the number of formula units present in the unit cell. Then the corresponding standard uncertainties in the corresponding cell parameter. Next is lattice and type 1, 1 for primitive, 2 for uh, body centered I, 3 for uh, rhombohedral overs setting on the hexagonal axis, 4 for the uh, face centered, 5 for the A centering, 6 for the B centering, and 7 for the C centering. And we put a sign minus in front of this number if the space group is non centered. So P21 by N is a centrosymmetric primitive, so it is 1. Suppose there is P21 instead of P21 by N, then it should be minus 1. Similarly, in case of C centering, if it is C2 by C, a centrosymmetric space group, it is 7. If it is non-centrosymmetric like CC or C2, it is minus 7. Then symmetry oppression or coordinate of the general position, then scattering factor tells about the uh, different atom present in the unit cell, then unit number of atom present each type in the unit cell, then HKLF4, this command is read to read the HKLF, HKL file in the HKLF4 format. There are several other type also like HKLF5 and HKLF6, but the present file is HKLF4. So the command is at scale of 4 and then end to end the 
uh, process. Okay, so let's start the uh, structure solution part first and then the refinement. For this, I am using OLX2 as I have told you earlier. So I am going to file and open and I am going to open this file dot ins instruction file open okay so now I am going to work there are options solve and there is a little downward arrow I will press this and I will get a number of options for from this drop down menu I am using select p and going to press this button solve and it is solving and you will get a structure in a few seconds yes it is so this is the initially sold structure so in this structure i can see almost every atom is assigned correctly uh, instead of uh, these two atom whose thermal is looking bigger and this one so i am going to uh, delete these and now i have i want a systematic naming for these all atom so first i select these orange atom these are silicon atom one two sorry uh, two and three and type name one okay then nitrogen one two three four again name one then this aluminium name one this iodine name one and then i left with carbon these atom i am going to select these carbon atoms and type name one and sort this will sort all the atom in the iris file like iodine one silicon one two three aluminium one then nitrogen and then carbon okay so next step is refinement and for the refinement i am uh, using selection but before going to the refinement the space group suggested by select p are three p21 by n pn and p21 since p21 by n is a centrosymmetric space group so our priority is to solve first in the centrosymmetric space group so i am selecting the first one p21 by n so applying the weighing scheme and put ecta on to generate the c file and let's refine Uh, so this model produce this refinement produce initial R factor around 15% less increase the cycle to n and q peaks pose 25 and then refine so now I am getting the maximum q peaks of 16.4 electron around so it may be uh, a sulfur or it may be chlorine but since i had no uh, since i do not use any chlorine or sulfur so this should be something else so suppose uh, this is iodine and this is some other atom i don't know what is this so let's first uh, assign it as a carbon okay so I am going to assign it as a carbon. So it is C19. Okay. And I am going to refine. So the thermal is looking very little. So if I going to look the value, the thermal is negative. That's the problem. Okay. And if I am going to see the uh, diagram map, electron map by pressing ctrl m then i can see the green around this carbon which means i have assigned 
less electron density than the actual so if i come back and make this iodine instead of carbon and refine it then the thermal is become uh, too big uh, the value of thermal is around uh, 0.3 which is quite large and if i put the map on by pressing control m then there is red mean i have a giant extra electron density than the actual so there is a problem also there is some green here this is due to the uh, latest solvent we will handle it later but first our uh, target is to assign this atom so this is not carbon this is not uh, iodine so then what is this so if i am going back to the my structure then i can see this aluminium iodine bond here this one and one bond with carbon and iodine simultaneously so this position is actually occupied by the methyl the carbon of the methyl and iodine simultaneously so this is a case of an occupancy disorder how to handle this okay so first make it left carbon okay it is c19 and refine So, if I compact the structure by pressing this button, so I am not getting any other cubic or electron density around this atom. So, how to model this? Okay, just what you have to do, select this atom and go here and press this button, split set. And by left mouse and shift key, move this atom little bit apart from this to a little bit longer distance as we know the aluminium carbon distance is different from aluminium iodine distance okay so make it iodine and select these two atoms and type add bond now you can see this is part one and this is part two if I am going to select these, then free variable is initial value is 0 0.75. I guess it it will refine to the final value later on. And the part 1, 2, 1, and part uh, 2 is minus 2, 1. Okay. So there is ID command. This note, this is not actually the case. So I have to remove this command because the carbon aluminium bond is different from in length different from uh, aluminium iodine bond so i just removing this but i know uh, the these two distance aluminium iodine may be same so i select these two bond and type sardine okay and now i am going to define the r factor is drawn down around 11 percent define so it seems to be now good so i can remove the sadi command from here yes i can remove let's see what happened refine so refinement is nf stable so there is no need for the uh, sadi command here now next step is i have to refine the structure anisotropically i put anis and the next step is H8 to add the hydrogen and this nitrogen is not getting hydrogen then type H8 for the 3 now every atom is have hydrogen so define okay so refinement is stable and the R factor is around 6.46 and shift is getting stabilized to zero value almost uh, yes it is so if i look at the electron map now by pressing ctrl m then you can see no green signal here on the molecule so 
the electron density has been assigned. Good. So put back to the uh, original molecule, and now if I grow by typing control G, then the molecule is looking like this. Control Q to put the of the cupics. Now you can see the complete molecule like this. So if I press 0, 1, part 1 and 0, it is a two-fold halogenated case and part 2 it is a four-fold halogenated case. So it's fixed the problem of occupancy disorder. Now uh, come to the uh, another disorder which present in the lattice solvent. So I am going to type fuse and put cupids on and refine. Uh, let's make a little larger cupids for a better visualization. Now these are looking little bit large. So I am pressing this button compact. Now I am getting a strange type of cupids which doesn't correspond to any known solvent. But from crystallization point of view, I am expecting the benzene molecule in the lattice. So I am going to control G by group. Then I found an electron density like this. So it seems to be a benzene. If I going to uh, delete these two peaks, and this seems to be uh, benzene, the, a disorder benzene about the crystallographic inverter center. So this is uh, Q1, this is Q1 opposite, and this is Q4, this is Q4, this is Q2 and opposite Q2, and this is Q3 and opposite Q3. So this disorder is actually about the uh, spatial position, about the crystallographic uh, inversion center. Uh, so how to model? So first, how many benzene molecules? So there is half benzene molecule per S metric unit and one benzene molecule per formula unit. So I am going to model in the S metric unit. So I am choosing it half molecule. And that, uh, that half molecule is also disordered about the crystallographic inversion center. So how to handle this? Okay, so there are several ways. So one way is using fragment DB, that is um, some fast method, simple method. As I am a very lazy person, so I will go to this method. Let's uh, press this button soon. This fragment DB and I need benzene. Yes, benzene. So I am putting part minus one because the disorder is about special position about the crystallographic inversion center. Free variable is one okay and occupancy is some 0 0.25, one and fourth. Okay, and I am going to hit. And this carbon is suppose here, this carbon is here, and this carbon is here. So I am pressing this carbon first. And here, this should be here, and this should be here. So now it is fitted almost nicely. I can move a little bit with shift and mouse key, like this. It is going to fit. Yes, here it's going to fit, fit almost. Nicely, and the second molecule should be here. So I'm going to press escape and then going to fit the next molecule now part minus two. Other thing remain will same, will remain same. I'm going to fit this carbon should be here, this carbon should be here. This carbon should be here. So almost I am getting a nice fit. I can move 
little bit with mouse key. Just zoom it first a little bit for a better visualization. Now it is almost fitted nicely. Okay. Press escape and type fuse. Now you can see these two benzene molecule fitted with the help of fragment D. Now I am going again to work and press refine. The R factor is around 6.5% and now it is around 4.4%. That's nice. Yes. And then first I have to stabilize this shift by refining one or more time. Yes, now shift is stabilized and R factor is around 4.42. Yes. Now next step is of course hydrogen addition. I am going to select this whole molecule and add. Yes. And now refine. Oh, good. Now the R factor is around 4.32%. Nice. And maximum two peaks is now only one and a half left. Now I am going to select this molecule, select this any atom and type unique. So now you can see the part 0 minus 1, 0 minus 2, sorry. Ah, okay. So I am going to fuse it first. Yes. And then all. Yes, all part. And I'm going to grow, type in grow. Okay, now you can see the complete molecule. If I press 0 and 1, then only part 1, then 0, 2, second part 4, 4, then 0 minus 2, 0 minus 1, and all. All I am getting this one. So if you carefully look at this. Uh, solvent molecule. This is one of the benzene. This is one of the benzene. This is another benzene. Sorry, there it is. Okay, yes, here. So if you look at this solvent molecule, one and other. So the thermal of this are looking little bit smaller. So I am going to select part minus 1, cell part minus 1 and I am going to fix the occupancy a little higher. 0 0.25 it is already at 0 0.35. What will happen? The R factor is around 4.32. It is down to 4.28. That is nice. So, I am defining one more time to get this shift stabilized. Okay, good. So you can see the disorder is not actually 1 is to 1. It is in the ratio of 0 0.25 and 0 0.35. Uh, if I am going to select again uh, cell part minus 1 and making it uh, uh, 0 0.45. Let's see what will happen. No, the thermal are getting bigger and R factor is rising again. So this is not correct. I am going back and select part minus 1 and fix occupancy 0 0.35. Enter and refine. So this is a better option. Now I am getting the reasonable R factor. Refine one or more time. So this shift gets stabilized. I'm going to press this button. So the formula is getting updated. Some fractional number I am getting here. This is due to the uh, disorder. So if I am going to see the map by pressing Ctrl M. Now everything is almost nice. Here some electron density is left. That is due to disorder. But otherwise everything seems to be very nice. Define one more time. Final time probably. Yes. Ah, now 
everything seems to be nice. Uh, so I look at the F observed versus F calculated graph. Ah, it's nice. Very good. Uh, okay, so thanks for watching the video.